From the Cardinal Television Studios, I'm Adelisa Badzik with your Fish and News Brief. From the relative quiet of Mar-a-Lago to the bustle of New York City, former President Donald Trump traveled from Florida aboard his private jet to meet with his legal team in Manhattan Monday afternoon. Tuesday morning, Trump will become the first former or sitting president ever to appear in court charged with a crime. His historical surrender and arraignment, now a matter of hours away. Mike Valerio is in New York with more on the legal preparations and escalating citywide security measures. Former President Donald Trump is expected to spend Monday evening back in Trump Tower, strategizing with his legal team ahead of Tuesday's voluntary surrender and arraignment. He taken into custody um, with his Secret Service detail in tow. He will be booked, so he'll be fingerprinted. He'll get a NICID number, which is the New York State mm -hmm. tracker that shows you've been arrested and charged with a felony. Trump's defense team is clear on its planned response. We will very loudly and proudly say not guilty. I, very much anticipate a motion to dismiss coming because there's no law that fits this. And once the indictment is unsealed, the team will look at every every um, potential issue that we, we will be able to challenge and we will challenge it. On his media platform, Truth Social, overnight, Trump continued the drumbeat of the unproven claim that the case judge, quote, hates him. What we have to do is actually let the process play out. This is the uh, criminal justice system in America. Uh, when it's at its best, Justice is bl blind. That's the aspiration here. New York City leaders say there have been no specific credible security threats so far. While there may be some rabble rousers thinking about coming to our city tomorrow, a message is clear and simple. Control yourselves. Violence and destruction are not part of legitimate lawful expression and it will never be tolerated in our city. In New York, I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Members of the crew who will helm the first moon mission in five decades were revealed on Monday. The astronauts are NASA's Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Christina Koch, and Jeremy Hansen of the Canadian Space Agency. Monday's announcement cues up training for their historic lunar flyby, which is set to take off in November 2024. The Artemis II mission will circle the moon in a loop so big it could end up being the farthest distance any human has ever traveled. The mission is expected to last about 10 days. Artemis II is set to pave the way for Artemis III later this decade. NASA has vowed Artemis III will put the first woman and person of color on lunar surface. It will also be the first time humans have touched down on the moon since the Apollo program ended in 1972. NASA is targeting a 2025 launch date for Artemis III, but delays will likely push it to 2026 or later. Some McDonald's employees are about to not be loving it. Not after Grimace hands them pink slips. The restaurant has told all corporate employees to work from home this week in anticipation of layoffs. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. McDonald's CEO Chris Kimzinski warned the staff about job cuts back in January. What's not clear is exactly why the house that Ronald built is firing workers or how many will be affected. Sales were up about 11% last year, and Mickey D's is planning to open just shy of 2,000 new restaurants this year. For the fourth straight quarter, Tesla has made more cars than it has delivered to customers. Over the last 12 months, Tesla produced 78,000 more cars than it has sold. Tesla says it completed sales of more than 422,000 vehicles this quarter. That's around 7,000 less than its original forecast. In this year's first quarter, the company reported a 4% rise in sales. This, after Tesla cut prices on some vehicles, production and sales were up compared to last year's first quarter, but are below Tesla's 50% annual growth rate target. They're stylish and can add inches to your height, but high heels may also cause long-term damage to your body. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither explains what this footwear can do to your back and feet, and why it's not necessary to throw your favorite high heels out. For centuries, they've been the footwear of the fashionable, but high heels may be wreaking havoc on your body. Your feet are just as complicated as your hands. They're the same bony structure. 
except you have to walk on them. Dr. John Reach, a surgeon with Connecticut Orthopedic Institute, says the concentration of stress put on the front of the foot by high heels can cause crowding of the toes, bunions, and hammer toes, which can lead to problems with balance. But Reach says suddenly switching to flats isn't the answer either because your body may have become accustomed to high heels. If you've modified your gait, you've modified your walk, you've modified the way that your your foot accommodates the shoe that you're used to, and then all of a sudden you change it uh, and go to a lower lower ramp shoe, you're, you're going to pay a price for that. That could lead to other orthopedic problems like tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, and inflammation of the tissue connecting the heel bone to the toes, or arthritis, which can lead to posture problems and knee, hip, or lower back pain. Reach says protecting feet is critical. They're sort of your tires for your, for your body, if you will. Uh, it's very important for that to be in good top condition. To keep feet healthy, Reach says to consider dropping down an inch or two to lower the ramp of your high heel. Make sure your foot fits in the shoe, avoid pointy-toed footwear, and give your feet a break. Maybe you put it up for a wedding, maybe you put it up for uh, up with the pain for a graduation, and then maybe you switch out of them. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. A backcountry ski trip quickly becomes a race against time when a skier discovers a snowboarder in serious danger. Patrick Cornell has the incredible caught on camera heroics in today's Take a Look at This. Here we have a stunning snowy rescue. Watch as skier Francis Zuber slides right over the top of a snowboarder trapped upside down in a tree well in Washington State. Oh sh! You all right? immediately recognizing the danger of the situation. Hold on, I'm coming. Zuber jumped into action, digging deep into the snow, on, first freeing an arm, and then uncovering the face of the stuck snowboarder. <sighs> you okay? You all right? The job not done just yet, Zuber pulls a shovel from his pack to complete the heroic rescue. All right, how you doing, are you good? I'm good. Okay, good. I'll get you out of here in a sec, okay? Speaking of stuck, Police in Tampa stuck in a good old-fashioned gator standoff. This rascal of a reptile spotted in the middle of the night and apparently awake past its bedtime because it is a grumpy gator. Ready to wrestle, officers get a rope on the gator and after a few more moments, make their move. Hopping on the animal's back and securing those terrifying teeth with duct tape. With the once growling gator now silenced, officers hand it over so the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission can find it a proper home. And we wrap things up with these adorable and important cheetah cubs. These four fuzzballs are the first newborn cheetahs in India in decades. The animals were declared extinct in the country more than 70 years ago. These little ones are part of a larger government plan to reintroduce the animals in India. For Take a Look at This, I'm Patrick Cornell. That's it for today's news brief. For Fisher News, I'm Adelisa Badzik.